They automatically don't trust me from the jump. I've never given you a reason as of yet to not trust me. But because of your lack of trust, because of whatever you've been through, maybe because I look like something you've been with before, maybe because I smell like something you've been with before, I automatically have to dig myself out of a hole that I didn't put myself in to begin with. And now I have to put myself on guard because I don't know how you're going to act because you don't trust me. I have to worry about you acting out of your distrust. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Because I just want to build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I want to keep it real with you. I want to live better, eat better. I want to love better, sleep better. Yeah, I want to feel so aligned. In an alternative universe, what kind of woman would you be? In an alternative universe, no countries, no cultures, just what I would want to be as a woman in an alternative universe. Um, I'd want to be nice. Um, I'd want... I'd want people to admire me from up close and from afar. Like I want to be uh, admired for my graciousness and, and the, to smell like roses, stuff like that. I don't know clearly what it's like to be. I mean, but that's just what I would be. Okay. What changes are black men looking for in black women? Mm. So I don't like to talk in absolutes. So I can't speak for every individual black man, but I think that there's a, there's a, there's a lot probably almost borderline a majority uh, that would like to see black women be more approachable, like not so, I hate to sound, not sound stereotypical, but angry, you know, like, uh, just and to be more appreciative of a black man and understanding that um, I'm not taking away from a black woman's struggle because they go through a lot, but also taking into consideration the struggles of a black man, like not trying to compare struggles like, I'm a black woman, so my struggle is worse than yours. Like, not that type of approach, but like both just understanding they have different struggles, but, you know, I guess equal struggles to a degree. Um, I think those are two major ones, I would say. Those two, definitely. But I'm sure there's more. It's just at the top of my head. I feel like I should be diving deeper. Why won't you allow a woman to help you build or grow? Why would I not allow her to help me build or grow? I don't know if I would not allow her to, but grow and build in different ways. Like I would expect for myself before I get involved with any woman to already be at a certain level. Uh, that's just a personal thing that I feel like as a man, I need to be at a certain level before I engage with a woman. I feel like if, if I'm personally, for my personal goals and my personal stuff, if I'm not at the level that I'm happy with, that I don't need to be involved with a woman. So I'm gonna already be where I want to be at first. Now, as far as building and growing, you know, I, I believe that 
I believe women are very important. I believe women have a very important role in men's life. And I don't necessarily think it's to construct the man, even though some can, but I think that a woman's role for somebody like me would be more so helping on the building end, like you described, like, like, but I have to provide her something to help me build with. Like, if I don't have that already in place, she can't help me build. I have to give her something to build, help me build with. I can't just be like, let's build and then don't provide anything to build with. Okay. Okay, I wanna ask this one. Do men all know what you need in a woman past the physical? Do men, do, does every man know what they need in a woman past the physical? I think that depends on the, the man that you ask. Um, I, if I, saying past the physical, like this, that, that question is interesting because saying past the physical, uh, that's, that's part of being, that's part of what us men look at for a woman. Like, like growing up, like every time that, like I got sisters and every time that my sisters ask each other, like when they meet a new dude, they ask each other questions about the dude. And I never hear them, I, like every time, almost every time, and it could be different for different women, but almost every time one of the questions that comes up is, what does he do? Like that's a standard question like, how much money does he make? Do you know how much does he spend? Does he, oh, he got money, that type of thing, right? When I'm with my guys, anytime that I have talked about a new girl that, I, that I've been dealing with or that I'm thinking about being with, and I bring, and I talk them up, nobody asks, what does she do? They go, let me see a picture. Let me see what she looked like. So I, I can't just negate the fact that the physical is a lot. The physical is a lot. So saying when you, we're digging deeper past the physical, then you have to get into the guys that, that are maybe more seasoned, you know, that are thinking along, that are thinking along the lines of a wife um, and what, what they want from a woman. If they just want a one night stand, they're not thinking past the physical. I wouldn't, I didn't, um, but I think more seasoned men that are looking like for a wife, um, I think they have uh, ideas in their head, such as somebody who can help them raise a family, like her looks don't raise your family, um, her character does. Um, for me personally, like how she interacts with other people matters to me, how she interacts with other people. Um, Nobody, I mean, men like myself don't like to be with somebody that, again, like is not admired, not just for how they look, but like a stand up woman, like, like she's legit, like in how she carries herself, you know, where you can go out with her and you can bring her to any setting and you don't have to worry about being embarrassed uh, because ultimately she's a representation of you. And I think that that stuff matters. So I would say things along those lines. Um, and just somebody who, when you give them something to build with, they know what to do with it. So I would say that. Is chemistry or compatibility more important? I would say chemistry. The reason why I say chemistry because chemistry, and I seen something on this, like chemistry is more about suitable. Compatibility is something totally different. Like, what do you mean, Ty? Well, cat compatibility is like two people can, 
I saw this example before. It's so great. Two people can be compatible in, in like two people can come from the same struggle. So because they understand each other's struggle, they're compatible. I went through this, man. Oh, she went through this too. Oh, you understand me. You get me. But what happens when one of those people elevate, when they get over that struggle? What happens to that compatibility? If that person is not growing with you, you're no longer compatible. Chemistry is more about who's suitable for you. Like you may not, you may not have the same struggle, but you know what your goal is and what you need. You know what your what your end game is, and how does that person contribute to your end game? Chemistry has a lot to do with that. Um, that's just my personal view. So I definitely say that that chemistry is more important than compatibility. Okay. Define love. God. Define love <laughs> and relationships. <laughs> uh, Define love and relationships. Love and relationships. A feeling. That's it. You can't elaborate on it? Like, how does somebody show love or demonstrate love? Just tell me what you feel about love. I feel like love is important in relationships, but I don't feel like it's a defining factor. I feel like um, we talk about divorces and things like that. You ask some of these married couples in court, you can pull up videos, all these Judge Judy's and stuff. I know she don't do divorce courts, but I mean, these divorce court shows that come on TV and the judges ask these men and women, they're getting divorced. Why you want to get a divorce? And he says why, and she says why, and then she goes, "Do you love him?" Yeah. The, ask a girl, "Do you love?" Do you uh, ask the guy, "Do you love her?" Yeah. But they still want a divorce. So, it, love to me is that's what it is. It's it's, a, it's an emotion, it's a feeling, but it's not it's not an end all be all in relationships. And I think there's other factors that you have to consider alongside with love. But I feel like you can grow to love anybody if you spend enough time with them. Um, I think COVID-19 is an example of that. People, people got married with people, to people that they probably never thought they would get married to, but they spent enough time with them in the house. Spent enough time with them Netflixing and chilling. So... So then what what is or what are the pieces of glue that keep relationships together? Love isn't it. Well, there's different factors. Um, I would say finances is one. Uh, strong communication, trust. I will put I will put these above love because if you look at the top three reasons why people get divorced, you'll see finances up there. You'll see infidelity up there. Um, but if you ask somebody again why they cheated, they'd be, oh, I love that person. But they acted in a moment of lust or acted in a moment of weakness. And now, if that person that they're married to decides to take them back, the trust is broken. How are you ever going to fix it? It's hard to erase something out of your mind once it happens. And so that's why I think things like trust and things because, like, prime example, trust, right? Let's, 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 let's zoom in on trust for a minute. Trust. I'm sure there are guys that have done this too. So I'm not just pointing a finger, but since we're on the topic of, um, since I'm a guy, I have to talk about my dealings with ladies. There have been ladies that I have been with who, through their past traumas and past experiences, where they automatically don't trust me from the jump. I've never given you a reason as of yet to not trust me. But because 
of your lack of trust because of whatever you've been through. Maybe because I look like something you've been with before. Maybe because I smell like something you've been with before. I automatically have to dig myself out of a hole that I didn't put myself in to begin with. And now I have to put myself on guard because I don't know how you're going to act because you don't trust me. I have to worry about you acting out of your distrust. And so now to protect myself from you acting out of your distrust, how can I, I can't be comfortable around you because I don't know what to expect. I can know what I hope, but I don't know what you're going to do and I got to protect myself. That's the reason why I would say something like trust is is big and, and communication. We talk about communication. People, we talk about communication like it's one entire bubble. No, like there's different forms of communication. 70% of communication is visual. I think the other 25% or something like that is uh, what you say and then how you say it, your tone. Those are the three main types of communication. I think that, you know, when you're, when you're, a lot of times when uh, uh, you talk to your girl and you see her mood, you see her mood and you see how she's acting and you're like, what's wrong? And she says, I'm fine. You know, she ain't fine. But you got to be able to pick up on that because you could just take it for what it is. Another thing, like guys, a lot of times, if my girl asks me, how am I doing? I say, I'm fine. 99% of the time, I'm fine. There's no hidden message behind it. I usually just say straightforward what I mean. And I think communication is important because men and women communicate differently. And a woman can't expect a man to communicate the same way as her. Vice versa, a man can't expect a woman to communicate the same way as him. We communicate differently. And so communication, trust, I think what I said, finances. Come on, man. Come on, man. Like I was talking to, I won't say who I was talking to about this, but somebody very, somebody very close to me, we were talking about finances. And it was a woman. <clears throat> and I was like, you know, I was telling her why before I get involved with a woman or got involved with a woman that I had to make sure my finances were like, oh, it was great, it was good. Because I know that divorces, that's one of the top three reasons. And she was telling me like, she was like, yeah, you're right, you know, finances are important. You know, the guy and the girl gotta have this stuff together. And I was like, hold up. I was like, yeah, you're right. But I feel like the guy gotta have his stuff more together than the girl. And they have nothing to do with, I'm not being sexist about it, I'm just saying what it is based on facts. So we break this thing down, like, you go into hard times, okay? Like this is the example me and her were talking about. Okay, let's say he goes broke and he gotta ask you for $50. You give it to him, you don't give it to him. If you got it, don't got it. Cool, you give him $50. He's still broke. You add, he asks you, y'all married now, he asks you for another $50. Maybe you don't got it this time. Now y'all both frustrated. And the girl was telling me, yeah, you know, finance is important because as a woman, if you don't make enough money, you know, he's going to leave you. And I was like, conceptually, I get what she's saying, but... The reason why it doesn't make sense is because over between 70 and 80 percent of divorces are initiated by the woman. So divorces aren't really happening because the woman is broke. It's happening because the man is broke. Or because the man, it, it, it's always, the financial burden is more heavily put on the man than the woman. And unfortunately, I think that is something that um, maybe not, unfortunately, just depending on how you were brought up, but that is something that we overlook is that we get so caught up in relationships or young ladies get caught up in relationships and they, they look at a guy's potential 
instead of what he actually is. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with looking at the potential, but you got to understand when you make them vows for better or for worse, if he never get better, what if it gets worse? Are you going to be able to deal with that frustration? Are you going to stick around till he get his money right? And I think that a lot of women have good hearts. They want to stick around. They're not evil villains. They want to stick around. But how long are you going to be with somebody? And every time you go to the toy store with your child, they can't ever get anything out of the toy store. You can't, you can't, you can't ever just splurge a little bit. Like it's always a struggle every time. You're going to get frustrated. And it, you may not, it may not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but eventually you're going to have enough. And I think we see that example happen a lot of times too.